This program is sponsored by Lanka Hospitals. Caring, curing. Hello everyone, welcome to our television's Mediline program. We conduct this program specifically to spread awareness on health and well-being so that you could make the best out of your life. Mediline is in collaboration with Lanka Hospitals, the market leader for healthcare industry, providing the best of medical services for Sri Lankans as well as international representatives, of course, through the best of specialists. Talking about specialists, today we have Dr. Dhammika Rasnayaka, consultant thoracic surgeon with over 15 years of experience in medicine. He practices medicine at the National Hospital for Respiratory Diseases, Valisara. Hello doctor, nice to have you with us today and it's a great pleasure to have this interview with you. <laughs> so today's program we're going to talk about malignant pleural effusion. So doctor, to start the conversation, why don't we just explain what malignant pleural effusion is? As in Sana, malignant pleural effusion is the collection of fluid inside the pleura mm -hmm. or inside of your chest mm -hmm. related to a presence of malignancy. Mm -hmm. This actually, pleura is a potential cavity in between the lung and the chest wall because there is a thin a single cellular layer mm -hmm. overlying the lung as well as chest wall and in between these pleural layers there is a cavity. It is a thin uh, cavity which contain normally about uh, 5 ml of fluid mm -hmm. but when the presence of malignant cells due to the spread of advanced cancer into the pleura mm -hmm. it causes accumulation of fluid due to excessive production as well as reduction of reabsorption mm -hmm. that it breaks the equilibrium mm -hmm. so it will lead to accumulation of fluid which causing a lot of respiratory symptoms. Mm -hmm. That is the malignant pleural effusion. Mm -hmm. It's commonly associated with advanced cancers. Mm -hmm. So doctor, what are the symptoms uh, of malignant pleural effusion? Uh, these patients generally get shortness of breathing mm -hmm. or tiredness, which they didn't have earlier. Sometimes it may be a recent onset cough mm -hmm. and excise intolerance. These are the common symptoms associated with malignant pleural effusion. Sometimes they can have pleuritic type chest pain or that some chest pain which is throbbing type. Mm -hmm. These kind of symptoms are common but they are vague symptoms. Mm -hmm. And most common thing is excise intolerance. What kind of cancers cause uh, malignant pleural uh, Generally, any kind of advanced cancer mm -hmm. can cause pleural effusion. Mm -hmm. Commonly, advanced lung cancers, advanced breast cancers, ovarian cancers are the common causes. Mm -hmm. But it can be any kind of cancer which has spread into the plural, ca plural cavity. Mm -hmm. Uh, how does the investigation process happen, doctor, once identified? Yeah, generally, uh, if you present with this kind of shortness of breathing, the recent onset one, or exercise intolerance, uh, you, you have to uh, complain to your doctor, commonly the, your um, oncologist or your respiratory physician. Mm -hmm. Then what we do is we initially do a chest x-ray. On a chest x-ray, classically you can see white out of the affected site. Mm -hmm. So, and not only that, even the clinically your physician or doctor can find the presence of fluid inside the chest. After that, you can do needle aspiration and investigate on this fluid. Then even you can find the presence of malignant cell if it is a malignant pleural effusion because that other causes also can cause pleural effusion mm -hmm. like infection and some other metabolic diseases. So you have to uh, find out whether it is malignant pleural effusion or related to uh, any other disease mm -hmm. by aspirating it and send for investigation. This is a basic uh, investigation. Mm -hmm. After that, you can further evaluate by having a CT scan. Mm -hmm. 
mm. of chest. These are the basic investigation. Okay. After that, depending on the patient's nature and the disease nature, you can do further analysis or further investigation like thoracoscopy, which I will describe in few minutes time. Right. Okay, doctor. Now, uh, this malignant pleural effusion, once identified at an early stage, are there any early treatments? Like how does the treat early treatment process happen? Yeah, it is a very good question because early treatment is essential. Mm -hmm. uh, what will happen is if you have to have malignant pleural effusion for a long time, uh, it will cause compression of the lung because your lung volume will be occupied by the fluid and it will lead to collapse of lung. When the lung is collapsed for a long time, it will lead to chest infection. Mm -hmm. And these patients are commonly after chemotherapy or kind of treatment for cancers. Mm -hmm. Maybe this may, might be the initial symptom, but commonly they are following chemotherapy. So their immunity level is suppressed. So they are more prone to get, get infections. Mm -hmm. So they can have infection and serious complication. Not only that, if you delay the treatment, that collapsed lung will have a thick layer of f fibrin mm -hmm. over the lung. It will lead to uh, inability of expand the lung mm -hmm. even after treatment. So it will complicate the matter. So it will complicate the complete treatment of collapsed lung. Mm. So that is why you need to do early investigation and early treatment. Mm -hmm. So doctor, what are the treatment options? Like is there only one or whether there are a few options where you can treat a patient once identified? Or? Yeah, basically treatment, there are several treatments. Mm -hmm but it should be tailored according to the patient's conditions and patient's disease nature. Mm -hmm. Simple treatment is pleural aspiration. With a needle, you can aspirate the pleural effusion and it will relieve patient's symptoms as well as you can get the samples to analysis. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, if the patient's condition is poor or if the patient can't undergo any other surgical procedures, you can do repeated aspiration. Mm. Then, if the patient is fit for a surgery, you can uh, insert a camera and take all the fluid out and you can look through the camera inside the chest and if there is a malignant uh, suspected lesion, you can take the biopsy mm. and you can adhere the visceral pleura to the parietal pleura or that you can adhere to the lung surface to the chest wall mm -hmm. to prevent further accumulation of pleural fluid. That is called pleurodesis or video assisted thoracoscopic pleurodesis. You insert a camera, small camera while the patient is anesthetized okay. and you do this procedure. So the patient won't feel anything. After that uh, it is uncommon to have a repeated attack or repeated episode of pleural effusion after this kind of treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I told, if there is delayed presentation and if the lung is permanently collapsed by having a thick layer and fibrous lung due to the uh, presence of pleural effusion for a long time, then you can have an indwelling pleural catheter. Mm -hmm. That is, insert a small tube into the chest. It is kind of permanent tube with a small drain bag or small drain bottle. Mm -hmm. That is other kind of treatment, but it, but it is a uh, bit uncomfortable because that you are always carrying this bag or mm -hmm. bottle. But if you present at late stage or with destructed lung, it will be helpful. Mm -hmm. So doctor, what are the problems associated with repeated aspiration? Uh, well, that there are a couple of problems. Okay. One thing is, when you aspirate repeatedly, that aspiration-related problems can be happen because these patients are immunocompromised patients, and as you know, that with they after chemotherapy, mm -hmm. their blood cell counts is 
low. Okay. So they, are, they have very high tendency to get infection. Mm -hmm. So when you insert a needle, you can introduce a germ into the chest. So they can have chest infection. No. Okay. As well as their blood cell count is low, particularly platelet count. So they can have internal bleeding associated. Mm -hmm. In that case, it will make the uh, problem complicated. Okay. As well as your lung is like a ba air filled balloon. If you penetrate the lung with a small needle, even there can be a leak into the pleura. Mm -hmm. So that kind of condition called pneumothorax or simply air inside the pleura. In that case, you have to treat that condition mm -hmm. in a different way. Okay. So those are the common problems uh, associated with needle aspiration. So, doctor, what do you really do as a surgical uh, pleuritis? What we do is, we make the patient sleep okay. under the general anesthetics. Mm -hmm. And we keep position the patient on lateral position mm -hmm. and make a small hole in between your ribs okay. to accommodate about 10 millimeter size diameter camera. Okay. Small camera, it's like your pencil. Yeah. We insert that small camera into your pleura. Then you can look around the pleura nicely with 10 time magnification. Okay. And you can get a couple of samples <laughs> and then you can have exact diagnosis as well. What kind of disease and even histological type and even sometime molecular level of diagnosis okay. because it will lead, it will help to tr uh, decide your treatment for your oncologist. Mm -hmm. Then after that, as I told initially, uh, there may be permanent collapse lung due to the formation of thick layer over the lung. Oh, okay. If that so, what we can do is we can peel off even that layer with that help of the camera and with the aid of couple of instruments. Mm -hmm. After that, we make this lung completely expanded. Mm -hmm. And then what we uh, insufflate a kind of gum or kind of adhesive agent. Okay. That is uh, commonly the talc, sterile talc. Okay. While injecting this sterile talc, we can adhere the lung surface to the chest wall. So, by doing that, we can obliterate the pleural cavity. Mm -hmm. So, thereafter, there is no space to keep the fluid. Uh -huh. And after that, we put a small <coughs> tube inside the ch chest and we leave this uh, tube for about 24 to 48 hours mm -hmm. and we come out, uh, recover the patient from anesthesia. So, all the procedure take about 30 to 45 minutes, mm -hmm. but it will give you a very good result and they are completely free of symptoms after that and after about 48 hours, you take out the drain and then, uh, then they can do any kind of work because they, it's a very uh, pain-free surgery right. and very comfortable. Even after the, the whole process, does the patient have to rest for a, for a few days or? To I recover from the pr the camera and like all the process, <laughs> yeah, it's surely. like a surgery, right, doctor? Because yes, yeah. but here the special thing is, after lung surgery, patient need to have kind of exercise okay. because you can't stop your lung work yeah. because that your lung is the organ which uh, supplies oxygen to the body exactly. as well as it uh, eliminates the carbon dioxide. Yeah. so it should work. So maintain its normal function. We never sedate these people. Mm -hmm. And we ask them to walk around with this bag or with this tube. Mm -hmm. And we ask them to do normal activities. Right. And not only that, we ask them to blow a balloon and other respiratory exercise equipments. Mm -hmm. By doing that, it will expedite the patient's recovery. Okay. After about 48 hours, they are up to the normal living standards. Right. So we can discharge them 
in about 48 hours time. They are so back to normal? With the they are back to normal. Even they are ready to go for their normal work. Mm. Because as it is, as I mentioned earlier, as it is a keyhole surgery, it is pain free. That is the beauty of keyhole surgery. Because mm -hmm. earlier days, we need to do, make a big cut to do this kind of surgery. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, it's just a simple hall to accommodate a camera, mm -hmm. an instrument, a size of a small pencil. So sounds a bit scary, but now since you are explaining it, I think you, yeah, you're it relaxing is. all the patients who are watching. <laughs> Generally, it is uh, not a very difficult surgery, okay. not a very difficult, painful experience. Mm -hmm. so, uh, they face it very comfortably, and commonly, most of the people ask, uh, "Doctor, is that I had surgery?" Hmm. Because they are not sure about that whether they have had a surgery because that they are expecting much painful experience than they have. Okay. After that very informative discussion with Dr. Dammika Rasnaika, we are now ready to take a short break. We will be back soon. Lanka Hospitals. Caring. Curing. This program is sponsored by Lanka Hospitals. Caring. Curing. Welcome back after the break. Today we are in discussion with Dr. Dammika Rasnaika on malignant pleural effusion. And just before the break, we started the conversation on video assisted thoracoscopic pleural surgery. Now, Doctor, coming back to the discussion of this surgery. Now, the term surgery scares people off. How can you put them in ease with this uh, surgery? Like, is it painful? How can you give more, mas like, a message to the public? Because I'm sure people are just scared to come and take the surgery at an instance. I assure you that as I explained earlier, this surgery is with minimum pain mm -hmm. mini and minimum uncomfort. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is that we do it as a keyhole surgery. We make a small hole and do the surgery with the aid of small camera. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, after this surgery, we make the area numb with using local anesthetic agents. Mm -hmm. So they a long-lasting local anesthetic agent, they work about 24 hours. Actually, first 24 hours, they won't have any pain. But after that, you can give ordinary analgesics or painkillers to make them comfortable. Generally, they are not uh, having significant uncomf uncomfort or significant pain after this kind of surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are back to their normal work soon, mm -hmm. uh, even after 20. 48 to 72 hours, mm -hmm. they can go for their normal activities. Mm -hmm. So, uh, doctor, now we don't do this surgery for normal people who are suffering this disease only we really do this surgery. Now, if I ask you the question, a person who is severely undergoing this illness, can that patient tolerate this surgery? Yeah, actually, uh, this surgery mm -hmm. is mainly for this kind of severely a suffering patient with advanced cancers mm -hmm. because they have the malignant pleural effusion and it will cause a lot of complication like respiratory difficulty or their breathing mm -hmm. difficulty or exercise intolerance and they are not getting sufficient amount of oxygen so actually they are initial condition is more uncomfortable mm -hmm. but taking out fluid will make them comfortable mm -hmm. than uh, the condition which they were mm -hmm. so actually it make them more comfortable right. than making them uncomfortable mm -hmm. and other thing we make these people ready for their treatment as well assume if a patient with pleural effusion and shortness of breathing and they can't lie on the bed, mm -hmm. so they are always on sitting position or standing position to make their breathing easy. Mm -hmm. So this kind of patient can't get their normal treatment, particularly chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. And other thing, even chemotherapy won't be much effective when there's a pleural effusion. I will mm -hmm. describe in few minutes because 
when there is a pleural fluid collected inside the chest, mm -hmm. and when if the, that kind of patient get chemotherapy, all these chemotherapeutic agents will accumulate inside this fluid, mm -hmm. which is called third space loss. Mm -hmm. It makes their treatment also ineffective. Okay. So, by doing this kind of surgery, we make them comfortable for their next stage of treatment and we make them comfortable for their normal living standards mm -hmm. as well as they are ready for their treatment and the treatment will be much more effective and successful uh, for these kind of people after the surgery. Mm -hmm. So actually it has a lot of benefits mm -hmm. than uh, risks. Mm -hmm. And most of the time these people are anyway debilitated patients mm -hmm. with cancers. But in my experience, they become better. much more comfortable and better after uh, the surgery. Is there any way the patient has to uh, prepare in advance for the surgery, doctor? Generally, we assess all the system functions. Okay. Because as I told, they can have metabolic derangement. Mm -hmm. We assess all these metabolic status mm -hmm. as well as their heart state, state mm -hmm. as well as their lung functions prior to the surgery. And depending on the, their condition, we optimize the system for the surgery. Mm -hmm. After that, we do the surgery to make their maximum safety. Um, also, doctor, I think this is a very valid question to talk about the age limit. Is there any age limit for this surgery or this disease? I'm sure nowadays when you say cancer, there's no proper age. Even the infant to the old age person, uh, they're affected with cancer. In this case, uh, coming into the malignant pleural effusion, is there any age limit? Uh, actually, no, mm -hmm. because it can be from young age to the old age mm -hmm. and particularly more in old age people right. because as you know that uh, when your uh, age uh, goes up mm -hmm. the incidence of cancers are mm -hmm. rising as well as uh, they can have any other, other kind of diseases associated. These people can easily face this kind of surgery mm -hmm. because with as I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. this keyhole surgeries or video assisted thoracoscopic surgeries, you make a minimal trauma to the patient. Right. So it will keep other metabolic systems safe mm -hmm. without having much derangement. Mm -hmm. So that is much more safer for all older patients. Even we have done this kind of surgeries for patients in eighth or ninth decade. Oh, right. so without any complications mm -hmm. and without any major uh, discomfort. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, they feel much better after surgery. After surgery. It's all about trusting the doctors, I guess. <laughs> Doctor, let's now also talk about the after effects of the surgery, um, the medication process and what really happens, whether there are any bad effects or the positivity of it. Now, you said the person absolutely gets into back to normal after the surgery. But I'm sure all surgeries have after effects. If we just talk about it a bit. Generally, this kind of surgery doesn't have much significant after effects like significant uh, prolonged pain and things. Mm -hmm. And there's no chest tightness or any other difficulty in breathing after this kind of surgery. Mm -hmm. But they can have minor chest infection after surgery. In that case, we can give a couple of days antibiotics mm -hmm. and sort out that problem. And sometimes, very rarely, they can have recurrence okay. or repeated fluid collection because the nature of cancer. But it is about uh, less than 5% mm -hmm. of incidence. When can they really have the chemotherapy, doctor? Uh, generally, as these wounds are small, mm -hmm. they can go for chemotherapy early. It is about after about two weeks time, mm -hmm. they are ready for chemotherapy. Not only that, they are much uh, 
more prepared for chemotherapy because they ha they don't have third space loss okay. and there's their lung functions are okay mm -hmm. and they are no not prone for chest infection after mm -hmm. chemotherapy because as you know that chemotherapeutic agent are known to cause immune suppression mm -hmm. or it will associate with suppression of your immunity mm -hmm. and it will lead to have uh, you are, you make more prone to get infections mm -hmm. if you have collapsed lung with pleural effusion they may get infection but this kind of patient are safe for this kind of infection mm -hmm. as well as their wounds get healed quickly because those are small wounds mm -hmm. so they are ready for chemotherapy after about two weeks of uh, two weeks after this surgery, surgery. Yeah. so doctor if a person who is already undergoing ke chemotherapy comes for the surgery what are the pros and uh, cons of this uh, well generally if the patient is on chemotherapy mm -hmm. we ask them to wait for about three weeks after the last dose of chemotherapy mm -hmm. and we check the blood count we perform the surgery only the blood counts are in normal range mm -hmm. otherwise we can give drugs to uh, stimulate the blood cell production mm -hmm. and we can make the blood count normal prior to the surgery uh, other than that we do not have any other uh, contraindication for surgery uh, when the patient is getting an anti cancer drugs right. so you're not talking about this surgery and the treatments come coming into lung hospitals what are the special services lung hospital can a patient get all the treatments from here and also if people want to go out what are the uh, where they actually have to go for this uh, actually uh, any patient can get this kind of surgeries at lanka hospital mm -hmm. we have all the facilities for this kind of surgeries and all the key hall lung surgeries mm -hmm. and key hall thoracic surgeries at lanka hospital mm -hmm. but if a patient want to get it from government sector mm -hmm. you can get this kind of surgeries from national hospital for respiratory disease valley sir mm -hmm. uh, there you can have all the facilities for this kind of surgeries mm -hmm. and all the facilities for post operative care mm -hmm. Finally, doctor, what is the message you've got to uh, give out to the public on this uh, matter? Generally, my message is: if you are a patient with cancer, or if you are a diagnosed cancer patient, you need to have monitoring for this kind of pleural effusion. It is well known follow-up plan. Mm -hmm. Most of the follow-up protocols has uh, a free regular chest X-rays. so you have to get a regular chest x rays and chest check up not only that if you get new onset shortness of breathing mm -hmm. new, new onset exercise tolerance intolerance mm -hmm. as well as new onset cough or any kind of respiratory disease please consult your doctor mm -hmm. maybe oncologist or even your family doctor and get a chest x ray and get uh, examined by uh, an expert by doing that you can identify whether you have get any kind of chest complication mm -hmm. and if you have get such complications like pleural effusion mm -hmm. it is good to get early treatment it make you are safe as well as your lung safe if you get the treatment early mm -hmm. and with this kind of surgery we can make your life better as well as we can uh, make you uh, your life normal following this kind of surgery mm. so with that we are now coming into the conclusion of today's medline program so we were in conversation with dr damnika rasnayaka on malignant pleural effusion i'm sure if you were listening to the whole program you know what you really need to do and if you are a patient who is undergoing it or if you know someone who is going through it you know what to do go consult a doctor you've got to trust the doctors for this so thank you so much doctor for joining with us for today's uh, important conversation i'm sure the public is now aware about the malignant pleural effusion thank you so much for joining with us thank you thank you for the invitation
If you want to know more details about the conversation we had today, you've got to call the hotline number 070-353-2090. Let me repeat, 070-353-2090. See you again from the next Medline program. Lanka Hospitals. Caring. Curing.